This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 where the world designs electronics and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine for electronic parts. In today's episode, you will learn how to make a soil moisture monitoring system for plants using Arduino, a capacitive soil moisture sensor, an I2C supported SSD1306 or LED display module, and a 5 volt buzzer. For this project, you can use Arduino Mega, Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano, or Arduino Pro Micro, etc. You know, there is a long list of the Arduino boards. Just make sure the Arduino board you are going to select has all those pins which are defined in the programming. If you want to make a 100% DIY based project, then you can use my designed Arduino Pro Micro and my designed 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. I have very detailed videos on how to design an Arduino board and a power supply. If you combine these two on a single PCB, you can make a product. Anyway, in my case, I'm going to use an Arduino Nano development board and as I said earlier, you can also use Arduino Uno. A lot of people get confused when it comes to the selection of a soil moisture sensor. There are two major types of soil moisture sensors. Capacitive soil moisture sensors and resistive soil moisture sensors. Both capacitive and resistive soil moisture sensors have their own advantages and limitations and the choice between them depends on the specific requirements of the application. Capacitive soil moisture sensors work by measuring the dielectric constant of the soil which is related to the water content. They have the advantage of being less affected by soil salinity and temperature and they can measure moisture over a wider range than resistive sensors. They also require less power and are less affected by electrical noise. However, they can be affected by the soil type and density and they may require calibration for accurate readings. Resistive soil moisture sensors on the other hand work by measuring the electrical resistance of the soil which is also related to the water content. They are generally less expensive than capacitive sensors and can be used in a variety of soil types. They are also relatively simple to use and require no calibration at all. However, they can be affected by soil salinity and temperature and they may have limited accuracy and sensitivity. So the choice between capacitive and resistive soil moisture sensors depends on the specific requirements of the application such as the soil type, moisture range, accuracy and cost. In general, capacitive sensors are better suited for applications that require high accuracy and sensitivity or a wide range of soil types, while resistive sensors are better suited for simpler applications that require low cost and simpler operation. After the soil moisture sensor selection next, you need to know about the different moisture levels. Trust me, if you don't know about which moisture level to maintain, then using a soil moisture sensor is useless. The basic objective behind designing a soil moisture monitoring system is to ensure that water will be provided to plants on time and in a rightful quantity. If the soil moisture is too low, plants are at risk of being damaged and if the soil moisture is high, even then plants are liable to be damaged. The majority of plants thrive in soil having a moisture level that ranges between 20% to 60%. Any humidity level over 60% can potentially cause damage to the plant which is relying on moisture from the soil to nourish. The 60% limit may vary. Some experts believe that majority of flowers, trees and shrubs require moisture levels between 20% to 40% while if you are dealing with vegetables then you need to maintain soil moisture between 40% to 80%. For the sake of this video, I'm going to select 40% to 80% of the soil moisture level. I think I have shared enough useful information with you guys. So without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This is the capacitive soil moisture sensor V2.0, but you can also use V1.0 or V1.2. Well, V2.0 is an updated version of the V1.0 model with several improvements. The main difference between the two versions are the V2.0 sensor has a new design with a flat sensing surface 
that improves the accuracy of the measurements and reduces interference from the surrounding soil. The sensing range of the V2.0 sensor has been increased from 0 to 50 percent to 0 to 70 percent soil moisture content making it suitable for a wider range of applications. The V2.0 sensor requires less power to operate which makes it more energy efficient and suitable for battery powered applications. The V2.0 sensor has a more stable calibration that requires less frequent recalibration than the V1.0 sensor. The V2.0 sensor is compatible with a wider range of microcontrollers and single board computers than the V1.0 sensor. Overall, the capacitive soil moisture sensor V2.0 is an improved version of the V1.0 model with enhanced accuracy, sensing range, power efficiency and compatibility. The only thing I don't like about this version of the capacitive soil moisture sensor is that its components are exposed which is why it's the cheapest option and slightly more expensive versions of the capacitive soil moisture sensor the electronic components are waterproofed. If you have been using Ultium Designer for creating schematics and designing your PCBs and you don't know about Ultium 365 then let me tell you about it. Ultium 365 lets you store projects in the cloud with all the documents and components you might need to complete all your tasks. To unlock all of the functionality of Ultium 365 you must first connect to your workspace a separate environment where all your data exists. After logging into your account, you can access all of the features of the Ultium 365 platform. Let me show you how to create a workspace. Click on the Not Signed In drop down button and click on the Sign In. Click on the Register an account. It's just a two steps process into your email ID or you can also register with Gmail and Facebook. Once you complete the registration, then come back to Ultium Designer, enter your email ID and password, check the sign in automatically box and click on the sign in button. And your Ultium 365 workspace will activate. Click on manage if you want to change your password, your information and you can also write about your experience and projects. And finally you can click on the save button. I will share more tips and tricks with you in my upcoming videos. I have added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine. The three wires, yellow, red and black are clearly labeled as the analog output wire, VCC and ground. So the yellow wire which is the analog output wire should be connected to the analog pin on the controller board. This capacitive soil moisture sensor accepts a wide range of input voltages due to which it can be used with 3.3 volt and 5 volt compatible controller boards like Arduino, ESP8266, ESP32, Raspberry Pi, Pico and lots of other controller boards. If you want to know more about its technical specifications and theory of operation then you should read my article available on electronicclinic.com. I've added a link in the description. The yellow wire of the capacitive soil moisture sensor is connected to the analog pin A0 on the Arduino Nano, while the VCC and ground pins of the soil moisture sensor are connected to 5 volt and ground pins. A 5 volt buzzer is connected to a digital pin 4. This is the I2C supported SSD1306 or LED display module. Its VCC and ground pins are connected to the 5 volt and ground pins on the Arduino Nano whereas its SCL and SDA pins are connected to the Arduino pins A5 and A4. A5 is the SCL and A4 is the SDA. This is the 5 volt regulator power supply based on the 7805 voltage regulator. The power supply part is optional. You can also use your laptop or computer as a voltage source to perform your initial experiments. But in the long run, you are going to need an external power supply so that's all about the connections and still if you have got any confusion then you can follow this circuit diagram. You can download it from our website electronicclinic.com. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. It's just a few lines of code and there isn't anything complicated. So let me start by explaining how to install these libraries. Simply copy the library name. Then go to the sketch menu. Then to include library and then click on the manage libraries. Paste the library name in the search box. As you can see, I have already installed this library. Follow the same exact steps for the other library. In 
it's just a few lines of code and there isn't anything complicated all i'm doing is to read the soil moisture value then i map the value to find the percentage and then i print the values on the oled display module i have also used a condition so whenever the soil moisture value drops below 40 percent the buzzer will turn on so that's all about the programming i have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the arduino and capacitive soil moisture sensor v2.0 in action Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.